Since 1915, the Pac-12 conference has inspired athletes and fans alike. But today, it is on the brink of collapse, and thousands of student athletes worry their dreams and years of hard work will be collateral damage. It was honestly a surprise and almost kind of a disappointment just because there's so much tradition and um, kind of pride that goes along with being a part of the Pac-12. This week, five teams, including Oregon, Washington, and Arizona, announced their plans to leave the conference. That brings the total of Pac-12 teams jumping ship to eight. The biggest blows, powerhouse programs USC and UCLA. Teams started leaving for the Big Ten and Big 12 conferences after the Pac-12 failed to secure a lucrative television deal for football games. In the other conferences, the schools will make millions in football revenue. Over the 10 years of the deal, we anticipate averaging over $50 million just from direct media rights. The Big Ten now spans 15 states from coast to coast. For some fans, the change is welcome news. This is exciting, and I think that what it's going to do on a national level for exposure for these, these schools that are transferring from the Pac-12 Pac um, is going to be a positive. But for others, the collapse of the iconic Pac-12 is worrisome, especially for student athletes who do not play football. Athletes like Maddie Doan say the newly aligned conferences will create a travel nightmare for most student athletes, forcing them to log thousands of miles crisscrossing the country for regular season competitions, making it more challenging to balance schoolwork and the physical toll of sports. I can't imagine having to travel six to eight hours um, to get, just go to one meet. It would, it's so grueling on the body, especially um, if you're be competing in the next few days. Even some big names in college football are worried. Do we know what the number one indicator of, uh, of symptom of, or cause of mental health is? It's lack of rest and sleep. Traveling in those baseball, softball games, you know, those, those people, they travel commercial, they get done playing at four, they got to go to the airport, they come back, it's three or four in the morning, they got to go to class. I mean, did we ask any of them? Questions still remain about the fate of the Pac-12 and the four remaining teams, Cal, Oregon State, Stanford, and Washington State. But for the teams that have already left, athletes could be playing in Oregon one weekend and New Jersey the next. All right, with that, Ellison Barber joins us now in studio. And Ellison, I know this is a huge deal for people who love college sports and for those athletes, um, but this is sort of a tale of two sports, right? Because if you're a football player, a basketball player, you don't necessarily travel the same way as a swimmer or somebody who plays maybe squash or even ten on the tennis yes. team. Very big difference travel lifestyles, right. if you will. And that's one of the concerns here when our team was speaking to student athletes who aren't in big programs like big money football programs or basketball programs. They say, look, those teams, they're flying to games on chartered jets. It's faster. It's more comfortable than the commercial flights we have to take as soccer players, as track stars. And that adds to the difficulties they feel for making these potentially very long commutes to games. And do we know if the names of the leagues are going to change because there was the Pac-12, the Big Ten? I mean, it, does this change? now the numbers have made it all chaotic where on paper you're like surely they're going to no official word yet on okay. name changes but when you look at the big 10 a lot of fans have thoughts on names that could be and just perusing through social media some have said why don't we just drop 10 call it the big conference some have said why don't we call it the continental conference uh -huh. some have jokingly said let's call it the really big conference yeah. and others have said just call it the bigger 10 the coast to coast <laughs> yes. conference um finally is there any talk about how this is going to affect the sec mm -hmm. they're obviously a football powerhouse yeah. but now you're going to have these other conferences with teams from all over the country and, and their competitive play may get better. Yeah, this is a question that could maybe get me in trouble at home. I grew up yeah. in a SEC house. I yeah. married an Ohio State fan who has lots of thoughts on the yeah. SEC that we don't agree with, but that's part of the goal here, right? There's certainly the hope that with these moves, the games will become more competitive, more exciting for fans when you have Western powerhouses like Oregon, Washington, playing some of these big name schools on the East Coast like Penn State. Yeah. Okay, Ellison Barber breaking it all down for us. Ellison, we appreciate that. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.